Okay, so today's video is going to be all about the top five skills needed for cybersecurity. Now, of course, depending on what role you're in in cybersecurity, many people are going to have different opinions about these skills. Okay, so number one on this list is foundational knowledge on different operating systems, including Linux, Windows, and Unix machines. So I do think that knowing the foundations of different operating systems, especially popular ones like Linux and Windows, are going to be really important for getting into cybersecurity, specifically because you never know when something is going to come up that has to do with computer architecture, computer operating systems, computer networking, and all of those kind of tie back to the specific operating systems that you're using. And for example, if you're going into to pen testing then you're likely going to be using a lot of linux and when i say knowing foundations of an operating system i'm essentially talking about knowing how to proficiently use the operating system on a day-to-day -day, maybe knowing some relatively basic to intermediate commands as well as how the actual operating system for a linux machine may be different maybe different from a windows machine or a unix machine if you're someone who's getting into pen testing and specifically are using Kali Linux, which is, I guess, the flavor of Linux that is very much tied into pen testing and ethical hacking, then you may want to get familiar with the popular tools that also come with Kali Linux. For example, Metasploit, Burp Suite, etc. And I can list here on the screen all the tools that are included in Kali Linux. All right, number two on this list is cyber intelligence and hacker news. So this may not necessarily be a skill to a lot of people, but I definitely feel there are some people who have a knack for it compared to others. And that is specifically around cyber intelligence, where you may be gathering information from multiple different sources and then being able to take that information and then share it with others in an understandable and comprehensible format because a lot of these cybersecurity and hacker news articles have specific terminology around different cybersecurity tools, cybersecurity apps, and a normal person who may not be in the cybersecurity space may not be able to understand the entire article to its fullest. So even if you're not in a cyber intelligence team, if you're someone who can understand these hacker articles, change them into layman terms and have normal people read them and understand what's going on and, and share ways of mitigating any vulnerabilities or exploits, then that's actually a really, really good skill to have. And no matter what role you're in in cybersecurity, being able to keep up with cybersecurity news and different events happening around the world is going to be very important for the security of your company as well as potentially even yourself and your loved ones. All right, number three on this list is knowing how to use the terminal and using the command line for whatever operating system that you're using. So this kind of ties back into your foundational knowledge about operating systems, but this one is specifically for terminal because, because honestly, Honestly, it is a very nice skill to have and it's also very convenient, especially if you're using Linux. I know many ethical hackers and red teamers who don't even use a browser anymore because specifically for pen testing, because they just directly go to the terminal and it has everything they need to do what they need to do. So while I'm not a 100% pro, I wouldn't even say that I'm advanced in using in using terminal or a command line, but based on my experience doing capture the flags and different try hack me's, having intermediate knowledge of different command line tools is going to be is going to be very important, especially for someone who does hands-on work like pen testing or maybe you're a network engineer and basically a lot of tools are going to live on command line. So whatever role that you're looking into in cybersecurity, I would definitely find the command line tools that are most popular and try to learn them to at least an intermediate to proficient state to then be able to put on your resume and talk about them in future interviews. But first, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is the Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office. The Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, formerly known as Acronis True Image, provides you peace of mind knowing that all your devices and backups are protected, as well as allowing you to choose a cyber protection plan that meets your needs for up to five computers and up to five terabytes of cloud storage. The product provides backup services for everything from full system to individual files, as well as prevention of cyber threats, including those that haven't been released. The Cyber Protect Home Office also provides restoration on all information to new hardware in case of any disasters. Their key differentiator is their integration of data protection and cybersecurity, for example, backup, anti-malware, etc., in a single solution. It also saves the user time by making things easier to manage, saves money compared to using two standalone paid products or solutions for backup and antivirus, and it also reduces complexity, as you'll only have to manage one solution instead of two or more. The Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office was renamed last year and was previously known as Acronis True Image, 
and it's one of the best ways to keep your data protected as well as secure from any viruses or any malware that may come in contact with your system. One of the most important things, especially as a cybersecurity professional, is making sure that your backups are secure and you're actually able to access them when you need them the most. Especially working in a field like cybersecurity where many things can go wrong, you really want a reliable, trusted backup solution so that you know that when you need it, the information, whether it's the files or your full system that you back up, is ready to go and secure from external threats or external attackers. Acronis is offering 10% off of any license that you purchase of the CyberProtect Home Office. And you can use code with Sandra 2022 That can be found on the screen as well as in description below with the link to the Acronis website. The code will expire on August 30th, 2022. So if you're interested, please be sure to check out Acronis at the link below to make sure that you have peace of mind knowing that all your files, all your systems are securely backed up because you never know when you're going to need it. Thank you so much for Acronis CyberProtect Home Office for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. All right, number four is identifying and analyzing exploits. So I know some of you might hear this and, and automatically assume that, that identifying a bug or an exploit in whatever application or code that you are using on a day-to-day -day may specifically just be for pen testers or red teamers or ethical hackers, but actually identifying vulnerabilities is part of everyone's job as part of an organization, not just a cybersecurity team. And that's something that I feel needs to be emphasized a bit more because because it's kind of like that quote if you see something say something because a cybersecurity team may have may have hundreds of security assessments or penetration tests that they're performing every year and a lot of applications only get penetration tests once a year so throughout that year anything could happen and let's say you're a software developer for a specific tool and you find some insecure exploitable piece of code in your application you're obviously not going to wait until the pen tester comes check your code a year later to find that vulnerability and fix it. I would hope, of course, but it also takes a lot of foundational knowledge and skill to be able to identify those exploits in the code, the applications, the tools that you're using on an everyday basis because a pen tester only knows so much about your application. They only come in with some knowledge about pen testing, but they may not know everything that your application does in terms of functionality, where it sends data, where it receives data, and basically every exploitable surface on your application. You likely will have way more knowledge about it compared to the pen tester that's coming in to test it once a year. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. And even if you're not a developer and you're not technical, you could be a user that is doing user acceptance testing and maybe you're a stakeholder for a specific tool or application and just using the application maybe you find some vulnerability that you think that you think may be exploitable or have negative consequences to your company or organization and then you share it with the developer team to get it fixed honestly i feel like identifying and analyzing exploits is is one of the hardest skills to hone because a lot of it comes with time spent looking at code looking at applications looking at vulnerabilities even knowing what the vulnerabilities are because of course there's a lost top 10 but every day there's a new vulnerability found and added to different to different libraries to different tech stacks to browsers to operating systems to whatever applications and tool they are using there's thousands of surfaces or vulnerabilities to live in your system and it can't just be the pen testers looking for these vulnerabilities it has to be an all hands on deck situation and the organizations that do this the best are usually the most well off in terms of not having security or data breaches so if you're someone who is looking to hone the skill i would definitely of course look into the os top 10 which is the most common web application vulnerabilities as well as just trying your hand on a few try hack me or hack the box challenges and just seeing how you can exploit a specific piece of software of course don't go around hacking into random people's websites which i believe is illegal so definitely stay in those sandbox environments with try hack me's and hack the boxes and that will give you a lot of experience just knowing what to look for and where to go about finding exploits even if it's not your job it's really just a learning experience and also a way for you to help cultivate your problem solving skills in cybersecurity okay number five on this list is incident response now this one is definitely one of those very process heavy things that i feel not everyone is interested in so whether you like it or not incident response is definitely going to be a very big part of your organization's cybersecurity strategy because when an incident happens you have to know what to do and what processes what processes to follow what people to talk to what policies you have to refer to when you're kind of going about these security incident so of course there are official certifications for incident response but even just looking online you can probably find a pretty good example of what the average incident response procedures look like for a company 
And even if you're not an incident response analyst or someone who is on that blue team side and, and works on the procedures and processes after things go boom or bad things happen basically, it's still really good to have that incident response knowledge so that you know the steps in case something did happen and you're able to take action. One of my ethical hacking mentors in my previous role actually had an incident response certification and he mentioned to me the importance of incident response which is why I'm passing it on to you guys and he was someone who was on the red team side and not the blue team side so definitely keep that in mind it's not just the blue team that needs to know about incident response if everyone on board knew what they were doing then obviously things would go a lot smoother in terms of when security breaches happen you're still going to consult the red team and be able to and have them incorporate whatever vulnerabilities or exploits that we're taking advantage of to then be able to look for those in future red team assessments or penetration tests okay the next thing on this list is network architecture so this is an area that honestly is not my strongest I actually took multiple networking classes in college but I had never really been a huge networking fan I say that as if everything that I do isn't connected to a network but hear me out Networking is definitely one of those things where you either really like it and you get really deep into it or you're someone who's like, oh, it's there and you kind of look at it as a black box and don't really focus on the protocols, the hardware, the software, the, the everything else in between that goes into networking. But it definitely is very important, especially when you're in cybersecurity. So if you think about it, all the data, all the communication that your organization has is going through some network. Whether it's internally, externally, or somewhere in between, it really is important to, to know whether or not your data is encrypted while it's in transit, to know whether you're communicating securely with someone through a VPN or a VoIP or, or whatever protocol they are using to securely communicate with someone with someone that may be on the other end of the world. And that all goes into networking and network security. So I'm not saying to become an expert at everything at networking and, and knowing all the port numbers to every single protocol in the world, but it is just generally important to kind of know the popular ones or know the difference between a switch and a router, an extender and a repeater. All of these very common phrases that you'll probably hear about um, when you go into the real world of working in cybersecurity, even though I've never worked in anything network related, I've still sat in on many meetings where people are talking about WAFs or stateful and stateless firewalls and it's honestly just really good information to know even if you're nowhere near being a network engineer and having a good foundational knowledge of network architecture or maybe even just specifically about your organization's network is going to be really helpful in helping you infer and make decisions on your company's cybersecurity strategy because you kind of know the foundations of what can work, what may not work, what can fit into your network and what can't, what tools you can bring in, what third party vendors you can bring in that won't interrupt what's already live and running in your network. All right, the last thing on this list is knowing how to code or at least knowing how to read code. So I know not everyone is going to be a developer, not everyone wants to be a developer or, or even wants to be involved in coding. And even though this is a cybersecurity channel, I do believe that coding is a very core skill that you need in tech roles across the board. But I obviously am a little bit biased because I come from a coding background. In case you guys didn't know that, I started in software development and then moved over into cybersecurity. And I do think that the most transferable skill that I've had in that whole timeline is just my coding skills and being able to understand what, what code is doing. So even if you don't want to be a full-fledged developer or even want to touch code, honestly, it's just really helpful to maybe as a pen tester, read some JavaScript, write a Python script to help you do some red teamer things, read someone else's malicious exploit or payload and know what it's doing. All of these things are skills that are, that are going to be really beneficial to you no matter what role you go into in cybersecurity. So you don't have to be coding up applications and and be super into front end or back end or iOS or anything. Honestly, it's just the ability to understand what code is doing, even if you don't want to code on a day to day basis. And if you're someone who's going into maybe malware analysis, then this will also be a really good skill to have for reverse engineering exploits or just again, understanding what payloads are doing and what your attackers are trying to take advantage of. All right, so I think I listed in the beginning that I had that this was going to be a list of the top five skills for cybersecurity, but Obviously it has become seven because I added the last two as a bonus, but let me know in the comments below if you have anything to add to this list. And I would love to hear what you guys think about any of these skills in cybersecurity and maybe even some that you may not agree with. 
All right, thank you guys so much for watching. That's it for this video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.